Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to our October newsletter in which we provide a brief update of the health awareness uh, events that are happening this coming month. My name is Sabine and I'm the Community Engagement Officer and I'm joined this month by Fiona, she's our Complex Care Coordinator uh, and later Amanda, our Health Promotion Officer, will be joining us as well. Uh, welcome Fiona, thank you very much for joining me. Um, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at TDHS? Thank you Sabine, my pleasure. I was born here at the Timurin Hospital and have remained in this community that I'm very proud and passionate about. In my role, I have the privilege to engage with consumers in the community to provide support services to enable them to live independently in their own homes. I also manage the discharge planning of consumers being discharged from hospital. Uh, my role is to ensure that they are discharged home in a smooth transition with all the support that they require. Yes, um, I think a lot of people don't really realise how much is involved with that, aren't they? So, um, and in your role as a complex care coordinator, you would deal um, with uh, carers as well with regards to respite and it's National Carers Week in October as well. Um, can you um, explain a little bit that respite is not only for community members to have a rest here but it also is a, a bit of uh, well-being for the carer isn't it? Yeah that's correct Sabine. I consult with the carers and arrange in-home respite and residential respite here at TDHS we also have a social support group that uh, provides respite uh, two or three days a week if, if somebody requires that. Uh, the carers provide an important role in, to their care recipient, enabling them to live in their own home environment. Uh, it's important that the carer takes a break for their role and their daily challenges and respite provides carers time to focus on their own well-being. Yeah, it's very important uh, to look after the carers as well, isn't it? You can't uh, pull from an empty cup, as they say, so they need recharging too, don't they? Yep, absolutely. And I, I always say if the carer uh, wheels fall off, then everything falls off. Yeah, sure do. So it's important that they're supported um, and they have the, the opportunity to be um, cared for themselves and look after their own health and well-being. Yep, definitely. Uh, now, um, your assessment uh, for different services also includes Meals on Wheels. Yes. Uh, and with National Nutrition Week in October, um, nutrition is very important, isn't it? And um, yeah, we do make sure that all the meals are according to the right nutrition and dietary requirements. Yep. Nutrition is very important, especially with elderly. Um, the Try for Five is Nutrition Australia's annual campaign to raise awareness around the role of food on our health and encourage Australians to eat more vegetables. The campaign is executed every year in October during National Nutrition Week and brings together multiple sectors to collaborate which includes Meals on Wheels. Nutrition Australia encourages Australians to increase their vegetable cons consumption to the recommended five serves per day. Our kitchen staff work continually with our dietitian Emily to update menus for our ward and Meals on Wheels to make sure the nutritional and as dietary requirements are met. Yep, very important. Um, a good, good meal is very important for uh, healing the body and the soul, isn't it? Yes. Now, as you're often dealing with the vulnerable within our community in your role, Fiona, uh, you would get confronted with a lot of different conditions uh, that are out there in the community. And one of them uh, that people might not know too much about is dyslexia. Um, can you uh, explain a little bit more about dyslexia and how it is treated? Yes, Sabine. Firstly, it's not a, it is very important to understand that dyslexia is not a disease. The word dyslexia comes from the Greek language and means difficulty with words. Individuals with dys dyslexia have trouble with reading and spelling despite having the ability to learn. Individuals with dyslexia can learn, they just learn in a different way. Often these individuals who 
have talented and productive minds are said to have a language learning difference. Paying attention to empowerment, emotional intelligence and self-esteem is vital when it comes to dyslexia and associated reading challenges. And knowing that help is out there, the Dyslexia Association has lots of information and resources available. Yeah, very important, isn't it? Because I think we'll be surprised how many people still have, um, have dyslexia and trouble with reading. reading. Um, uh, now, another important event in October is um, uh, Doctober, which is um, putting a highlight on our assistant dogs and therapy dogs within our healthcare system. Um, now, our aged care uh, respite and other patient on the ward uh, always love a visit by a therapy dog, uh, Sasha and her owner, Jenny, don't, don't they? They do. Fiona? So, prior to COVID, our patients, especially our aged care and respite, loved having Sasha come to, to the hospital with Jenny on a daily visit. Uh, Dogtober was started by Assistant Dogs Australia to recognise the contribution that dogs make to our health and wellbeing. Interaction with a gentle and friendly dog has been shown to ease feelings of isolation and depression and provides comfort, encourages communication and reduces boredom. Pet therapy is very calming, it brings joy, it takes their minds off what they are going through and brings a bit of normality back into their lives. People's faces light up as soon as Sasha enters the room. For many, it's a bit of, it's a bit of home and the staff get a bit of a boost too. Sasha is a rescue dog that has been trained through Delta Therapy Dog Program and Jenny has her with her every day when she works in the Timberine Library where Sasha also helps children to reduce their anxiety with reading. Sasha would have read a lot of books over her lifetime. We're looking forward to having both Sasha and Jenny visiting again soon. And that's the same in the community. I've noticed there's a lot of elderly people out there um, during the COVID isolation that's actually got a dog and truly it's their best friend. And it is, it's it? a great companion for them. I can't imagine what their lives would be like if they didn't have that dog. Yeah, I know, it's very important, isn't it? It's, um, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely uh, a, a human or a, a thing that actually, something breathing that comes to, uh, yep. to the door when you come in, even though you've been five minutes away. And, uh, and they do say that um, cuddles and petting a pet yep. is, um, uh, is really good for your health, uh, low blood pressure and everything. So uh, it makes you feel good, especially as we can't really cuddle our loved ones, um, our family members yet. Members, so so yeah. very important. Uh, now thank you so much, Fiona, for helping me highlight uh, some of the important awareness events for October. And uh, anyone, anyone who um, needs support in any way, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, yes, thank you, Sabine. I can be contacted by calling Timberland Healthcare and just ask to speak to me. My working hours are 8.30 to 5, Monday to Thursday. Um, if I'm not here because I'm out uh, seeing uh, consumers in the community just leave a message and I'll return the call. Yep, no that's great, uh, doing a great job and it's very uh, an evolving job and very broad so um, and you've been here for a long time as well Fiona so <laughs> so thank you again um, for highlighting this um, My pleasure. with me and uh, I'll now hand over to Amanda our health promotion officer uh, just to talk a bit more about some other health promotion events in October. Okay thanks Sabine for that well, some of our community would have heard about polio, a highly infectious disease caused by a virus which invades the nervous system and can cause total paralysis in a matter of hours. Until the 1950s, polio crippled thousands of our children every year in industrialised countries. Soon after the introduction of an infective vaccine though, that was the 1950s and the early 60s, polio was brought under control and practically eliminated from the, as a public health problem in industrialised countries. Most of you will know that polio vaccine is a scheduled vaccine for our babies. We've all been vaccinated, or most of us, against polio, so we don't see polio. Some of us might actually remember the images of being treated in iron lungs, which is a very confronting image, if anyone takes the time to actually Google that. It's especially 
it was uh, relevant in the grip of another pandemic, and that was polio. But it's important not to forget these historic events, and hopefully we can learn from them. Um, it's just as relevant now with our fight against COVID-19. Getting vaccinated helps protect you and those around you from getting seriously sick from COVID-19. The vaccines being used in Australia are very safe and effective. The vaccines um, that our community is amazing at rolling up their sleeves and we recently celebrated an amazing milestone, milestone of 200,000 vaccines in the Barwon Southwest region, which is fantastic. So let's keep it going. You can book in for an AstraZeneca or a Pfizer vaccination by calling our Timburn Clinic on 555 088 for an appointment. As the vaccine rollout continues, it's important to remain vigilant by washing your hands regularly, carrying a face mask with you and wearing it when required, coughing and sneezing into your elbow and keeping at least 1.5 metres apart. If you have any symptoms at all of COVID-19, no matter how mild, and even if you are in doubt, double vaccinated, you must get tested and stay at home until you receive that result via your phone. So testing can be done at our healthcare service by calling 555 for an appointment or the Timburn Clinic, 555 Now, the still on pandemic, um, it has made us a bit more fearful of going into a healthcare service and might have stopped us from attending our regular appointments like breast screening, um, mole checks, skin checks. But these are deemed as essential services and have continued to run throughout the pandemic. Um, our body is our temple and we must actually look after it and be proactive. So all could be okay, which means you can stop worrying or if something is actually detected, an early diagnosis is always important and could actually be life-saving. Thanks, Sabine. Uh, now, just to add on from Amanda, our body is an uh, indispensable vehicle for experiences and we often do take it for granted uh, and uh, we really have to look after it physically and mentally. Um, a big thank you to you, our lovely community, uh, for joining us uh, and please continue to check in on our social media uh, to read all the uh, wonderful stories and uh, resilience that we have within our community. Um, please continue to be mindful to yourself uh, and each other, uh, mentally and physically. Uh, together we are doing a fantastic job and uh, if we keep on going, uh, we keep our town and district open and safe. Uh, so please uh, stay apart, uh, stay safe and stay kind as we work together for a healthy community. Thank you.